It's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation, it produces its own gravitational field, its own anti-gravitational field, and it's what's used to lift and propel the craft and create distortions around it. It's, a, it's an amazing material. In the world of UFO mysteries, Michio Kaku has stepped forward with a groundbreaking revelation about element 115, a long-kept secret. This element, believed to have extraterrestrial origins, has sparked intense curiosity for years. Kaku's disclosure sheds light on a hidden chapter in scientific history, fueling speculation and excitement. What does element 115 mean for our understanding of alien life? And why was it hidden for so long? Join us as we delve into Michio Kaku's unveiling of Element 115. In the late 1980s, Robert Scott Lazar, an American figure associated with conspiracy theories, claimed to have worked on analyzing advanced technology from outer space at a location called S-4, near Area 51 in Nevada. According to his assertions, he participated in studying nine unidentified flying objects, which he called flying saucers. Among these crafts, he highlighted one referred to as the sport model, supposedly powered by a mysterious substance known as Element 115. Lazar suggested that Element 115 enabled these saucers to perform extraordinary maneuvers, seemingly defying the laws of physics. He described S4 as a secretive environment where teams worked on various projects in secrecy. Lazar wasn't just claiming to have seen UFOs. He provided intricate details about his involvement with them, including technical specifications, locations, and a timeline of events. His narratives resonated with people curious about what the government might be concealing regarding encounters with extraterrestrial beings. However, not everyone was convinced by Lazar's accounts. Scientists like Michio Kaku scrutinized his story, questioning his educational background and the validity of the places he mentioned. The scientific community also cast doubt on his mention of Element 115 and its supposed role in interstellar travel. Despite facing skepticism, Lazar made a significant impact. He sparked discussions about UFOs, introducing terms like Area 51 and Element 115 into everyday conversations. Before Lazar, Area 51 was merely a secretive military base, but he transformed it into a focal point for alien-related stories. His status as a whistleblower not only brought attention to Area 51, but also portrayed him as a hero, challenging government secrecy. Many saw him as a truth seeker, risking everything to reveal potentially world-changing secrets resonating with those disillusioned with official narratives. Although Lazar's story faced criticism and ridicule, it left a lasting impression. It paved the way for other whistleblowers to come forward with similar revelations about secret government operations and encounters with the unknown. The UFO discussion evolved from whispers and blurry images to a more vocal discourse, largely thanks to Lazar's contributions. In his descriptions of the S-4 facility near Groom Lake, Nevada, Lazar depicted it as a mysterious and heavily guarded location central to research on extraterrestrial technologies. He portrayed S-4 not just as a storage facility for alien artifacts, but as a site housing operational flying saucers with advanced capabilities. According to him, these saucers were hidden in hangar bays, cleverly disguised within the mountainside, suggesting a level of secrecy and sophistication beyond conventional understanding. He claimed that Element 115, played a crucial role in the propulsion systems of these spacecraft, creating a gravitational field that allowed them to maneuver in ways that defied traditional physics. Lazar's narrative painted a vivid picture of a world where alien technology was not just a myth, but a reality hidden behind layers of government secrecy and intrigue. Element 115 isn't readily available on Earth. Instead, batches, of this mysterious substance were given to a secret facility for experiments. Lazar describes this element being put into a spacecraft reactor, creating a gravity wave that helps the ship take off and move very fast. This story isn't just for UFO fans and conspiracy theorists, it's also getting attention in popular culture and science circles. 
Lazar's detailed descriptions attract both interest and doubt. Some see S4 as a place where discoveries happen, while others think it's just made up. But let's think about what it means if Lazar's claims are true. It suggests that the US government or a secret group has technology far ahead of what we know. It also raises the idea that we might not be alone in the universe and our governments might have objects from beyond Earth. It's a big deal, sparking intense debates. However, the details matter, and Lazar's story is controversial. The complexity of alien technology, Element 115, and S4's operations are all subjects of heated debates. Regardless of your opinion, talking about S4 and Element 115 makes us curious, hopeful, and skeptical about finding extraterrestrial truth. It's not just about space, it's also about what governments might hide. According to Kaku, when someone makes big claims like Lazar did, people naturally question them. Lazar's claims faced criticism and doubts over time, especially about his education and the existence of S4. Some said Lazar's records from MIT and Caltech couldn't be found, while others questioned why there's no clear evidence of S4 as he described. The physics community also had doubts about Element 115's role in propulsion, saying it goes against known physics laws. When Muscovium, also known as Element 115, was created and studied, its properties didn't match what Lazar described. It was unstable and didn't last long, making it unsuitable for powerful energy use and propulsion. There were doubts about Lazar's explanation of how alien crafts work, especially regarding gravity waves. Physicists, like Kaku, found his description lacking the detail expected from someone with advanced physics training. The idea of gravity waves seemed unfamiliar and conflicting with what's known. About Element 115 Some suggested that the stable isotope Lazar mentioned might not have been found yet, or was kept secret. They argued that our knowledge of elements and isotopes evolves, so what seems unlikely now might be understood later. Many thought Lazar's willingness to face criticism added credibility to his claims, showing he believed in them despite challenges. The debate about Bob Lazar's revelations reflects wider discussions about UFOs and alien life. Skeptics want solid proof, while believers trust evidence, intuition, and a feeling we're not alone. Some are open to possibilities, waiting for undeniable proof. Lazar's story, with its convincing details and confusing parts, will likely remain controversial in UFO history. The media played a key role in sharing Lazar's story globally. Investigative journalist George Knapp first brought Lazar to the public eye, lending credibility with thorough reporting. Knapp's TV interviews made Lazar's claims accessible and intriguing to viewers. Visuals like reconstructions and animations helped explain complex ideas, making Lazar's story more understandable. Documentaries expanded on his claims with expert opinions and investigations, showing a range of views from skeptics to believers. The internet changed how people discussed Lazar's story. Online platforms let people worldwide analyze every detail, uncovering new insights. YouTube and podcasts about UFOs spread Lazar's story widely, with some offering new perspectives and others trying to debunk it. The internet turned Lazar's story from a niche interest into a global topic, sparking curiosity and debates about our place in the universe. Scientists have carefully examined Lazar's claims, especially about Element 115 within the scientific framework. According to Lazar, Element 115 was vital for the engines of alien spacecraft he said he saw. He thought this element could create a gravity field, letting spaceships control space-time and travel between stars. But when scientists looked into this, they found issues. First, Element 115, as Lazar described it, wasn't on the periodic table until 2003, when scientists made it and called it Muscovium. But the Muscovium they made didn't match Lazar's description. It was very unstable, turning into other elements quickly. This quick change made it unlikely to be a reliable energy source, let alone one for space travel. Lazar saying Element 115 could control gravity interested physicists. According to Michio Kaku, gravity is a big force in nature, but we've struggled to control it despite lots of research. The idea that a substance like Element 115 
could affect gravity goes against what we know, given our limited understanding of it. We should remember that science is always open to new ideas. In the past, ideas dismissed at first were later proven true. But whoever makes a claim needs to back it up with evidence, like experiments or observations that others can check. There isn't strong evidence supporting Lazar's claims about Element 115's amazing abilities. Kaku noticed he didn't publish his ideas in respected journals or work with other scientists to check them. In science, teamwork, and scrutiny from experts are important before we accept something is true. Lazar not following these steps makes some people doubt what he's saying. Even though his story is interesting, believing it needs solid proof. Right now, we don't have that proof. To confirm or debunk Element 115's story, we need careful scientific study, not just stories or claims. When people talk about government secrets or hidden military stuff, everyone looks to the government for answers. This happened with Bob Lazar's claims about secret bases and advanced tech. The government didn't officially respond to Lazar's allegations at first, sparking more speculation. Believers thought the silence hinted at a bigger conspiracy or that the claims were true. Skeptics saw the silence as the government not wanting to address baseless accusations. As questions arose about Lazar's alleged work at Area 51 or S4, the government indirectly addressed these inquiries. Investigations into Lazar's academic credentials from institutions like MIT and Caltech resulted in denials from these schools. Some interpreted these denials as evidence of a cover-up, suggesting intentional erasure of Lazar's records. This led to skepticism regarding the accuracy of Lazar's narrative. Amidst the unfolding Lazar saga, the U.S. Air Force, overseeing the Nevada test and training range where Area 51 is located, maintained a secretive stance under protocols, barring the disclosure of specific operations and projects at the facility. The secrecy fueled further speculation. Unofficial responses, often candid and off the record, painted a nuanced picture. Former employees and contractors associated with Area 51 while not explicitly endorsing Lazar's claims, hinted at the presence of highly classified projects at the facility. Their accounts revealed a culture of extreme secrecy, where even personnel at the site might not be privy to all activities. In 2013, a significant development occurred when the CIA officially acknowledged the existence of Area 51 in a declassified report on the U-2 spy plane program. However, it's important to note that this acknowledgement did not validate Lazar's assertions regarding extraterrestrial technologies. The report clarified that Area 51 was utilized for testing spy planes. Despite varied governmental responses, denial, admission, or silence, discerning the truth remains challenging. Lazar's statements oscillate between credibility and doubt, and the government's reactions further complicate the narrative. These reactions reflect the complexity inherent in government secrecy, public curiosity, and the pursuit of truth amidst a backdrop of mysteries. Lazar's revelations had a big impact on his personal and work relationships. The attention and arguments about his UFO story strained his family bonds, causing problems and even breaks in his personal life. He often felt isolated because of the public focus, which made it hard for people to trust him. Professionally, Lazar faced difficulties too. People doubted his educational background, and experts in science and engineering didn't believe what he said. This made it tough for him to find regular work in his field, but he adapted by starting businesses that sold scientific stuff. Dealing with such a tough situation had a big impact on his mental well-being. Even though Lazar seemed calm in public, People wondered if he struggled inside with doubt and uncertainty. Sticking to a controversial story would test anyone's strength. After talking about Area 51 and alien tech, Lazar decided to step back from the spotlight. Despite all the attention he got, he wanted a quieter life. He still believed in his story but chose to be less public about it. He wanted a life away from constant scrutiny, whether from believers or skeptics. But the story doesn't end there. Investigative journalist Michael Schellenberger shared a potentially big finding about UFOs, sparking interest in the U.S. 
he found out that intelligence officials identified 30 aircraft not made by humans. This backs up what another whistleblower, David Grush, said about the U.S. having non-human vehicles. Schellenberger, known for his thorough reporting, says the information he shares comes from trustworthy sources within U.S. government programs studying unidentified aerial phenomena. What makes these claims more believable is that according to Schellenberger, those who talk about crashed UFOs either saw them happen or saw credible proof. This info isn't just for classified groups. Officials have shared it with important groups, like the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. But when Congress tried to check David Grush's claims, the office said they couldn't confirm info about the UFOs they recovered. This raises questions about whether the evidence is really unavailable or if there's a hesitation to confirm these claims. Schellenberger is surprised by what he found and thinks the unfolding story is mysterious. To find out the truth, it's important to look into government rules, UAP study programs, and how intelligence officers and groups that check these claims relate. As the country deals with this UFO news, there's more demand for honesty and a thorough investigation. People have been interested in UFOs and aliens for a long time, always capturing imaginations around the world. Even though the government says otherwise, sometimes people still see things that make them believe in alien visits. People who say they've seen UFOs often face doubt, which lets the government keep things secret. But things are changing now, with whistleblowers challenging what the government says and changing how the public sees this. Whistleblowers like David Grush, Ryan Graves, and David Fravor talk to Congress, disagreeing with the government's story of denying and keeping secrets about UFOs. Even though the Pentagon said Grush was wrong, other officials came out with proof that hurt the government's side, starting a big movement. When asked about his sources, Schellenberger admitted he left out some details from his report because they were too surprising. Now the big question is, how can we tell if a spacecraft is made by humans or not? Is it the stuff it's made of? How it's built? Or something else? This tale is about a big aerospace company trying to get civilian scientists and engineers involved in figuring out these UFOs they found. The idea is that sharing knowledge is key to making new things, especially when dealing with the science and engineering challenges these mysterious crafts bring. The Pentagon turned down the proposal due to concerns about maintaining secrecy as the program expands. Schellenberger's sources claim that these unknown crafts are real, challenging the Pentagon's dismissive view that sightings are just mass hallucinations. Schellenberger suggests that Congress can verify these claims by showing a sincere commitment to uncovering the truth. Recent information indicates we might be close to revealing the truth about UFOs, but a crucial question remains. Will the Pentagon willingly share information that has been secret for decades? The idea of finding evidence of crashed UFOs on Earth is exciting and raises questions about extraterrestrial pilots' fate. Michael Schellenberger, a prominent UFO researcher, has delved into this mystery. While credible sources reported crashed UFOs, only one source could confirm the U.S. government's possession of non-human biologics. Schellenberger, wary of relying on a single source, chose not to disclose this information publicly, aiming to establish the undeniable presence of UFO craft in government possession first. Schellenberger emphasizes the challenge faced by those sharing insider UFO information, fearing loss of security clearance and potential government retaliation. Like David Grush, other whistleblowers have come forward with similar revelations recently, challenging the standard view on UFOs. Notable skeptic Mick West acknowledges the importance of multiple individuals independently supporting similar information, making it more likely to be true. However, the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, Thomas A. Monheim, seemingly contradicted these revelations in a letter to Congress. While denying specific investigations, Monheim's response leaves room for interpretation and potential ongoing inquiries, sparking speculation about the level of official scrutiny into these claims. It's important to understand that just because more people are talking about something, it doesn't automatically mean there are aliens or a government plot involved. People who speak out, called whistleblowers, 
Talk about different things like UAP and potential problems in UAP programs. About 30 to 50 government workers or contractors have shared their UAP experiences with the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office at the Department of Defense. Nick Pope, an expert on UAP from the UK Ministry of Defense, said that witnesses and whistleblowers use various ways to share their stories, like the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, the Department of Defense Inspector General, the Intelligence Community Inspector General, or even Congress. This situation has led to speculation about whether people like Grush and other UAP whistleblowers are part of a planned US government effort to spread wrong information. In the past, a former US Air Force intelligence officer admitted to spreading wrong information about UFOs from the 1980s to the early 2000s. But there are doubts about the idea of spreading wrong information through the office of the Inspector General, as it can have serious consequences for lying to Congress, like up to five years in prison for people like Grush if found guilty. This adds complexity to Grush's claims and connects to ongoing discussions in Congress about UAPs. Knowing the history of government misinformation, especially about UAPs, is important to understand the current situation. Past cases have mixed true and false information, making it hard to know the real truth about UAPs. Both skeptics and believers in UFOs agree that more openness is needed to stop spreading wrong information. On purpose. The tension between doubt and wanting clear answers shows how tricky it is to get reliable information in this area. UFO secrecy isn't just a US thing, it's a global issue. Contrary to what many think, it's not only the US government keeping UFO info secret. There's global competition among powers like the US, China, and Russia to develop and understand extraterrestrial technologies. This competition goes beyond countries, showing a complex mix of interests. China and Russia are actively competing in a modern space race to understand and copy these advanced technologies, not wanting to fall behind in global power. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.